mathematicians, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the Gaussian integral, which is the simplest difficult integral that you can encounter. Now, the Gaussian integral is really simple to define. We're going to call it i, and we define this integral as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the function e to the negative x squared. And that function has no basic antiderivative. So we're going to need a trick. Now you might have encountered the Gaussian integral earlier and not have realized it, maybe in a statistics course when you learned about the normal distribution. Here we have a simple graph of one, the graph of y equals e to the negative x squared. And if you were to calculate the area beneath that graph and above the x-axis, over the entire x-axis from negative infinity to infinity, you get square root of pi. And we're going to show by evaluating the Gaussian integral that we get as our answer square root of pi. Now, there's a lot of results related to this, the Gaussian integral, and we're not going to go into detail about them in this video. This video is all about simply how we evaluate the Gaussian integral using the simplest technique available, which is basically converting to a double integral and using polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So we're first going to simplify our integral i. We have an even function over a symmetric interval. So I can rewrite this as double the integral from 0 to infinity. All right, next up, to get to a double integral, we're going to take our integral i and multiply it by itself. So we'll get i squared. We have i, 2, times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared, integrating that over x. And we're going to multiply that by another copy of our integral i, but I'm going to change the variable to y. So that way we're not using x as the integration variable twice. So we get another integral, 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of now e to the negative y squared. And we integrate that over y. All right, to convert this to a double integral, we're basically going to combine these single variable integrals into a single double integral. We're going to multiply our 2's to get a factor of 4. And we now have a double integral integrating both x and y from 0 to infinity. And since we're multiplying the exponential functions, we can add their exponents and factor out a negative and write our function here as now e to the negative and then in parentheses x squared plus y squared. All right, so now we're going to evaluate this as a double integral by converting to polar coordinates. So first, let's sketch what our region of integration looks like for this double integral. All right, and x goes from 0 to infinity, and y goes from 0 to infinity. That is the entire first quadrant. All right, so we're going to keep that in mind when we get the bounds for r and theta, polar coordinates. Let's introduce the coordinate transformations. x is r cosine theta. y is r sine theta. And there's a nice algebraic relationship, which is our clue in our integral here for converting to polar coordinates. The presence of x squared plus y squared. With these coordinate transformations, x squared plus y squared always simplifies to r squared. All right, the other thing we're going to need with our coordinate transformations is the differential area element in polar coordinates. dA is r dr d theta. And the very last thing we need is to convert our bounds from x and y to r and theta. Theta is easy here. Notice theta is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. All and since our region here is the entire first quadrant 
x goes from 0 to infinity and y goes from 0 to, zero to infinity, we're going to have to let r go from 0, the smallest the value r can be, all the way out towards infinity. So r goes from 0 to positive infinity. All right, we now have everything we need to convert our double integral in rectangular coordinates to a double integral in polar coordinates. So this is still a double integral for i squared. All right, and we're, we're going to get the integral from 0 to pi over 2. That's your theta bounds. You're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity. That's your r bounds. And we have now converting e to the negative r squared. And your differential area here, we convert that to r dr d theta. All right, and now we have a double integral in polar coordinates. Now, since our region of integration here involves all numbers, and this function is factored into a theta function, but there is no theta function here, times an r function, we can split this into a product of single variable integrals. So we can write this as 4 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 d theta times an r integral where we integrate r from 0 to infinity, and we're integrating the function r times e to the negative r squared. All right, now your theta integral, that's really simple. Your antiderivative is just theta. Evaluate that at pi over 2 and 0, and this just very quickly evaluates to pi over 2. Our r integral over here, that's going to require a little bit of work setting that up as an improper integral. So let's go ahead and go through that over here. All right, so the integral we want is the integral from 0 to infinity of r e to the negative r squared dr. We're going to set this up. The correct way, as an improper integral, we're going to replace infinity with a variable, we'll go with t, and then we'll evaluate the integral from 0 to t, and then we'll take that limit as t goes to infinity at the end. All right, now your integral here, which is now a regular integral from 0 to t, that we can evaluate with a straightforward u substitution. So let's go ahead and evaluate that, 0 to t of r e to the negative r squared. All right, we're going to choose as a substitution u equals negative r squared. Calculate your differential du. You'll get negative 2r dr. Notice you have a factor of r dr, but you're missing a factor of negative 2. So divide that over as negative 1 half du equals r dr. And since we're making a substitution with a definite integral, I always like to change or convert my limits using the substitution. So we have originally our r limits from 0 to t. And we're going to change them using our substitution u equals negative r squared. All right, if you just plug those in, r being plugged in as 0, you get u as 0. Plug in r as t, you'll get u as negative t squared. All right, now we can convert from r to u. Our integral is going to go from 0 to negative t squared. r dr converts to negative 1 half du, so we get a factor of negative 1 half, and e to the negative r squared that converts to e to the u. 
All right, and that's gonna be really simple to evaluate with an antiderivative. Your antiderivative for e to the u is just e to the u. And we just now evaluate that from u equals zero to u equals negative t squared. Just be careful with your negative one half there. So if you go ahead and plug these in, just be careful, you're gonna subtract. When you plug in u as zero, you're gonna be subtracting a negative. So that's really plus. And e to the u when u is zero is just one. So you just get a half there. So if you want, rewrite this, switch the order there, one half minus one half e to the negative t squared. All right, and that is pretty much our work here. We're practically done. The only thing we need to do now is take a limit of that as t goes to infinity. And we just evaluate this, the limit as t approaches infinity of one half minus a half e to the negative t squared. And if you rewrite that maybe as one over e to the t squared, or think of that as a decreasing exponential based off its graph, that exponential is gonna approach zero as t approaches infinity. So what we get here for the limit and the value for our r integral is that comes out to positive one half. So just plug that back in here. And the only thing we need to do now is realize what we have the value for, i squared. So let's write it down to the side here. What we have shown is that i squared, we want our integral, just i, we'll get to that in a moment. It's gonna be four times pi over two times a half. And if you simplify that, you can cancel out your factors of two and four there. And what we get is i squared comes out to pi. To get the value for the Gaussian integral, which is just i, take a square root. And we get the value of the Gaussian integral as square root of pi. Again, this is the standard, least difficult way to arrive at this value for the Gaussian integral, square root of pi. There are other ways, but again, this is the simplest, only really requiring a little bit of knowledge of double integrals and evaluating double integrals in polar coordinates. Maybe in future videos, we'll take a look at some other more advanced ways to arrive at this result, but we'll save those for later. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.